Hello, well today I'm in Louth, a historic market town situated at the foot of the Lincolnshire Walls and I'm here to explore some of its little known legends. I might even indulge in a few personal reminiscences along the way. For example, this is Louth Town Hall where I attended my very first live music gig back in oh, 1980 or 81. I went to see a couple of local bands playing punk and new wave covers and it inspired me to want to play music and to join a band myself. Something I've been doing now for the best part of 40 years. Now like most places, Louth has its share of haunted pubs. This is Ye Old White Swan on Eastgate, established in 1612. Uh, it's the oldest surviving public house in the town. It's said to have a ghost or two, which is not surprising for a building with so much history. There is a ghost of a tall man wearing a white cape who puts in an appearance before midnight. The sound of smashing bottles have been heard in a room, but on investigation, there is nothing to account for the noise. The apparition of a woman haunts an upstairs corridor. This is the old manor house in Eastgate. It also uh, has a haunted history. Now it's hard to film from the road because it's a private dwelling so I'm not going to get any closer for obvious reasons. Uh, there are several ghosts that allegedly haunt the property. One is the shade of a young lady. Uh, now she was a guest at the house and she broke her neck falling down the stone steps of the cellar after mistaking the cellar door for the dining room. The sound of smashing crockery has been heard in the kitchen, but on investigation, no broken crockery has been found. Uh, there is, or was, a cupboard in the back of the house, which appeared to be quite harmless. Nevertheless, it was shunned by family pets. Uh, dogs, in particular, had a dislike of it. They are said to whimper mournfully on the rare occasion they venture near it. At the back of the house are the old stables and the coachman's cottage. Now the ghost of the coachman is said to haunt the grounds and he's been seen looking out of one of the windows. Possibly that one. He's described as looking rather sad. He wears a brown suit, high white collar and a cravat. His hair is mousy and long and he stands sidewards and motionless with one thumb in the buttonhole of his coat as if he's waiting for someone. Incidentally, the infamous poet Lord Byron stayed here and there is a mounting block somewhere in the grounds used by him when he visited the manor. That statue over there was erected to uh, commemorate the Greenwich Meridian that runs through Louth. That's far too lengthy a subject to go into here. And across the road is St James Church and it has quite a claim to fame. It has the tallest steeple of any medieval parish church in Britain. Its height is an impressive 287 feet and 6 inches. If you include the weather vane, it's over 293 feet. Now there is a legend uh, associated with the steeple. It's said that uh, a local character by the name of Six Pint Smith was said to have climbed to the very top of it. Now, standing here looking at it, I feel sick at the very thought. Now, he was called Six Pint Smith because he could drink half a pint of beer for each stroke of the church clock at midday. At Louth Fair, a peddler challenged Smith to a drinking contest. He drank eight pints and then the peddler wagered that he couldn't drink a further two pints and then climb to the top of the church steeple. He took the wager, he climbed the steeple, he hung his hat on the weather vane and climbed down to claim his prize. However, when he reached the ground, he found that the peddler had run off with the prize money and he still had all the beer to pay for. And once more, in a moment of bravado, he'd lost his hat. Now the soldiers used his hat for target practice and his new nickname became Ten Pint Smith. This is Breakneck Lane, 
Now many years ago a horseman was galloping through this way and was thrown and flung at great force against the high wall, breaking his neck, hence the name. Now for many years it was said that the ghostly reenactment of the fatal journey could be heard in the form of galloping hooves. On the other side of the road is the Wheatsheaf pub. Now it has no ghostly associations as far as I know, but I've always liked the signboard. Okay, this is the last stop on my tour. This is St Mary's Old Cemetery. Now it's no longer used for burials. The last burial here happened in 1855 and today it's a public park. But as you can see the old gravestones uh, are still here, stacked against the wall as far as the eye can see. Now there are two ghostly stories associated with the cemetery that uh, I know of. There is a story of the grave digger who fell in the grave he had just finished digging and broke his neck. He haunted the cemetery ever after and it is said that the stone with the man's name on it is stacked somewhere with the rest of those by the far wall. The more amusing of the two is the skeleton who glides around the graveyard wheeling his head in an old wheelbarrow. He gives you forewarning when he's about to appear, however, as you can hear the rattling of bones and the squeak of his old barrow. Now, as I said, the, uh, the cemetery is now a public park. The old gravestones are all neatly stacked to one side, but um, what about the owners? Are they still here? Now that's something to think about if you choose to picnic here on a beautiful summer's day like today. Well that was my look at some of the ghosts and legends of Louth. Uh, if you've made it this far, thank you very much. I hope you'll join me next time, wherever that might be.